Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is the Zoom Multistomp MS70 CDR, and this is the Digitech Polara. And these are two pedals which appear to be pretty common with the synthy community uh, when it comes to giving your synth the greatest gift of all, reverb. So I own both of these pedals, and I've recommended both of them at uh, various different times to people. But I realised I've never actually sat down and tried them kind of next to each other to work out what the relative strengths were, and ultimately, I guess, you know, decide which one I like better. So that's what I thought I'd do today in this video. So the video is kind of going to go like this. We're going to start out with a feature comparison, if you like, because they are quite different beasts, really. Uh, then we'll dive into kind of like a uh, reverb pedal FAQ and trying to uh, just answer some of those questions, preempt some of those questions, I think, are the common questions that get asked about reverb pedals. And then we'll do a head-to-head -head sound test. We will listen to the comparable uh, algorithms on the two pedals and we'll work out, you know, ultimately which one we like the best. And then I'll save my opinion till right at the end of the video so I don't cloud your judgment when you are actually listening to and hopefully enjoying the sounds that these pedals put out. So let's start with the symbol of the two, which is the Polara. Um, lovely solid pedal, like it's properly, properly weighty actually, this pedal. It really surprised me when I got it. Um, we've got a very simple control layout. So uh, here, this knob here controls the various different modes of reverb. So we have a room, a plate, a reverse, a modulated, a, uh, what does that say? Uh, halo, which is kind of like a shimmer reverb. We've got the hall, of course, and then we have a spring mode as well. Um, this knob here literally just controls the level of the wet reverb. That's all it does, really straightforward. This one here is the uh, decay, so that's how long your reverb tails are gonna go on for. And then we've got this control here, which is labeled liveliness. What it does on the different algorithms kind of varies a little bit, um, but sort of puts generally, turn it uh, counterclockwise and things get more sort of dampened, duller, darker, and you go the other way and you get sort of brighter, splashier reverbs instead. Uh, the switch here is a uh, clickless switch, a noiseless switch, works very well. Good solid feel despite the fact you don't get a click. Uh, this switch up at the top here is the tails uh, switch. What that means is if it's turned on, uh, when you turn the pedal off, your reverb tails will continue to sort of bloom and blossom and die away. If you have this turned off, then as soon as you turn off the pedal, your reverb disappears uh, like a switch. At first glance on the zoom, you think, oh, I've only got three uh, knobs here. This must be a simpler pedal, but of course we've got a screen here and actually each of these knobs are also buttons. And then you've also got these four buttons down here as well. It's actually quite a menu diving-y kind of pedal. Um, but what that means is that you also have potentially quite a lot more control. Um, so each of the algorithms are essentially a, a, a virtual effects unit, a virtual pedal, and you can select them by coming up and down here. You can jump to different categories of, of pedals by pressing and holding. Uh, you can, when you turn one of the knobs, you go into a menu, and these menus are paged. So you can have um, multiple uh, pages. If I go to one of the more complex ones, like uh, this one, I think, if you go into the menu here, we've actually got three pages of controls. Um, you can save presets, which of course you can't do on the Polara. And probably the most exciting thing about the Zoom is what the CDR stands for. That's Chorus Delay Reverb. So this is not just a reverb pedal. This is a general sort of ambience uh, multi-effect. It also has some uh, compressors and some noise gates and some synthy type stuff in there as well. But I think probably the thing which most differentiates this pedal from this one is the fact that you can have multiple pedals, uh, multiple virtual pedals going on uh, in a single preset. So if you want to start with a, uh, a an ambience pedal and you want that going into a delay pedal, you can do that. So you can set up entire um, chains of effects on this, which just take a second and go and have a look at the price. Yeah, I know. That's ridiculous. You can have, um, I think, I don't know what the maximum is. There's kind of a maximum DSP uh, usage, basically. But I've had like five different effects all running into each other, reverb after reverb after delay, and it can get quite complicated and quite uh, spacey. 
so yeah um this is kind of uh, a much more complicated and potentially much more comprehensive pedal than the Polara, but of course it depends on what you're after. Okay, quick fire FAQ. Okay, first up let's talk about power. The Polara is powered from a nine volt DC adapter, uh, standard guitar effects uh, adapter. The Zoom will take an adapter as well, but it will also run on two AA batteries, not a nine volt battery for some reason, but two AA batteries, which means that if you're someone who likes to go and jam out and about in nature, that's a definite plus for the Zoom. Okay, next, how do they deal with line level? Uh, obviously, guitar effects pedals are designed for a guitar, uh, and a guitar doesn't put out anywhere near as much signal as, uh, as our synths would. So, um, first of all, the Polara deals with it beautifully, very high headroom as far as I can tell. Um, the Zoom also deals with it um, fine uh, most of the time, but you do sometimes drive it into digital clipping uh, on some settings if you are driving it hard. Okay, here comes a big one. Is it stereo? Polara, yes, absolutely. Stereo in, stereo out. Uh, zoom, yes, but some of the effects algorithms are only in mono. So um, as long as you're using a, a stereo effect, it will be in stereo. If you switch to a mono effect, obviously it will be mono. And as soon as you put a mono um, effect in the chain, if you've got multiple effects, it will squish it down to mono. Uh, so you'll lose all of the width that you have before that. Right, is it analog dry through? Polara, yes. Zoom, no. Why is this important? Well, I don't want to get into a discussion about the uh, various sonic qualities of the digital analog converters, um, but what I will say is that if you put the Polara uh, in an effects loop or in a, um, a, an aux sender and a mixer, you won't get any weirdness happening. The zoom, because it always goes to digital, uh, if you put it in an aux send, you will sometimes get these nasty comb filtering uh, sounds happening, which you might want to avoid. Just something to bear in mind. If you put it just straight in front of a synth into a mixer, not a problem at all. If you put it in an aux send, just be careful about that comb filtering. Next, does it go 100% wet? Um, Polara, no. The level control is the level of the reverb. Um, even with it cranked, you will still get the dry signal coming through at Unity. The exception to that is on the reverse mode. Uh, the reverse mode will only have the reverb, so that's 100% wet no matter what you do. So in terms of the zoom, sometimes. Uh, some of the algorithms, uh, like the HD Hall algorithm that we'll listen to in a minute, uh, the mix control does go 100% wet. Some of them have a uh, an explicit dry kill um, switch, uh, and then some of them, uh, the, the mix is more like a level control in the same way as it is on the Polara. So it depends on which algorithm you are using. So finally, for you ambient guys out there, do they go very, very long and very, very weird? The Polara, you've got a shimmer on there. That's probably the weirdest thing on there. And I guess by today's standards, that isn't super weird. Um, so not that weird. Does it go super long? Not really, not by sort of modern reverb standards potentially where um, on a lot of pedals we see things go to practically infinite reverb. Um, this doesn't go super, super long. It goes long um, compared to like vintage reverbs, I guess, um, but not like ridiculously, ridiculously long. Uh, zoom, yes, there are some very, very weird algorithms on here, and I will demo those separately uh, when we get to the end of the video, just so I can show them off a little bit. Does it go very, very long? Yes, um, some of the algorithms will go practically infinite. Um, so if you want to go very weird and very long, the, the Zoom uh, certainly has you covered for that. Okay, so now the bit that I suspect you've been waiting for, let's do the sound comparisons. So the Polaris got seven different algorithms, room, plate, uh, reverse, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is we'll listen to the two pedals um, with their sort of equivalent sound. So we'll do a room on the Polara and a room on the Zoom, and then a plate on the Polara and a plate on the Zoom, and so on. And then at the end of the comparisons, I'll also just show off a couple of the weirder algorithms on the Zoom that I think they are worth talking about.
So, uh, those were the sounds. Right, so here are my thoughts. Personally, I think that on every algorithm, the Polara sounded better. Uh, and yeah, it's as simple as that. I think the Polara sounded better. I think the Polara's reverbs sound better than the Zooms. That's not to say that the Zooms sound bad, particularly. Um, for example, I think the plate on the Zoom sounds great. It's not um, super um, faithful, I don't think, as a plate sound, but it gets really angry and dirty in a way that the Polara doesn't. I will say, though, the plate mode on the Polara just sounds huge, just wonderful and big and thick and wide. It sounds better. I think this one certainly has its place. What I will say is that I think the shimmer on the Zoom sucks, like it's bad. That's it. And the flip side is that I think the uh, halo mode, as it's called on the Polara, is lovely. It, Shimmer can be a bit over the top, but I think the Polara does it very, very, very tastefully. So if someone came to me and just wanted a great sounding, compact, set and forget reverb, I'm going to have to recommend the Polara every single time over the Zoom. But that's not the whole story, is it? Because of course, the Zoom can do so much more. Multiple effects not just reverbs, choruses and delays. And even when we talk about just the reverbs, this does some weird, unique sound in reverbs as well. So it's not as simple as me saying, just buy the Polara if you want a better reverb pedal, because my question really should be is, what do you want from your reverb pedal? The Zoom is massively more flexible. It has presets. You can stack up multiple effects, and that can get you to some really interesting sonic places. So if you're a sonic adventurer and you want to do weird stuff, then the Polara probably isn't going to be weird enough for you. The Polara is tasteful, beautiful sounding, um, but it's pretty conventional actually all in. The Zoom on the other hand um, does not sound as lush, does not sound as wide, but it can do stuff that the Polara can't even begin to think about doing. So if you like weird sound and if you like to tweak, then the Zoom might be a better shout. Um, or do what I've done and, and I guess get both um, and <laughs> use them uh, in the position that you want to use them in. So anyway, I hope that was interesting. I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments which uh, pedal you like the best, which algorithms you thought sounded great. Um, I, feel free to ask any other questions I didn't already answer. I'll try and get those uh, answered for you in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I'd love to hear which one you went for if you were trying to decide between them. And perhaps are there any other pedals that you want to see checked out in a similar sort of way? Um, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to afford to buy every pedal under the sun, but there are some at the lower end that I would be tempted to get maybe to do a video on. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.